Okay, so today we're going to talk about three planes and how they intersect. And from these diagrams here, we can see these are five of the possible configurations that could happen. The ones that aren't on this thing are the scenarios where I have a plane that is coincident with another plane that is coincident with another plane. And so they're just scalar multiples of each other. Or two that are the same. And then the third that is parallel. These are just kind of similar versions, similar to those. So we're not going to talk about those too much. But these are all the main configurations that can happen when planes intersect. And so we're going to solve some problems and figure out how this looks. So here's the first situation. We are going to find the intersection, if any, between these scenarios. So we need a technique to solve this. Now what I tend to do is I tend to convert these to matrices so that it is organized and I can keep track of what I'm actually doing. And so I write all the leading coefficients into a matrix, which is just a series of numbers. I'm going to call this over the equal sign. And now this is basically simultaneous equations. I'm going to write the first equation down on 1, 7. And now the next rows are going to be combinations of these ones. And I'm going to do my scratch calculations over here. So I'm going to write the first row, 11, 7. And then I'm going to look at the second row. And I, if I want to eliminate the x, I want this value to be 0. So if I subtract these, I will get 0. So I'm going to multiply the second row by negatives. And when I do that, I add it up, I get 0, negative 2, negative five, uh, 6, and negative 2. And I can simplify that to 0, 1, 3, and 1 by dividing by 2. That's the first calculate. Let's go to the next row. I'm going to type the top row, 11, 7. And then the next row, the same kind of thing, I'm going to subtract this. So it's negative 1 negative 4, negative 8, negative 4. Subtract down, I get 0, 0, 3, and 3, which is 0, 0, 1, and 1. All right. And so my whole objective when doing this cal these calculations are to get these three numbers to be 0. Once they're 0, then I can start to shift back to x, y's, and z's. And so this thing here says 1z is equal to 1, so z equals 1. This row here says y plus 3z, which was 1, is also equal to 1. And so y is equal to 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. And finally, the last line says x plus 4y, which is negative 2, plus 11z, which is 1, equals to 7. So x minus 8 plus 11 is 7. x, this is plus 3, is 7. So x is equal to 4. And so what it appears is that these three planes intersect in a point for negative 2 and 1. These three planes intersect in a point. So if I look at this diagram here, this is the scenario that they intersect in a point. This one here, they intersect in a line. These ones have no common intersections. So this is the scenario that we found. If I would graph these three planes onto uh, Autograph here. Here's the first scenario. Here are the three planes. Here you can see I've written three planes. And if I can slide around, I can see various things. If I select all three of them and I ask for the intersection, I get the point 4, negative 2, 1. And that point there is my point of intersection of the three planes. They meet as such. So this just confirms what we just did in this scenario here. And so the object is to get these numbers to be zeros. And then everything else falls out. So here are all the scenarios that I could have. And so I'm going to go into the matrices forms 
and I'm always going to have numbers in here. And so when I have this, if I would have this scenario here of three parallel planes, I would end up with a row of numbers on top. So X's represent numbers, and these would all be zeros afterwards, and these would be numbers. And then if that's the scenario that I would get, I would get three parallel planes. Going to this one, a row of numbers, here are my zeros. But as you can see, these are zeros, but this here is also zero equal to a number, which is impossible. Hence, there's no solution here. Zero equals a number, hence no solution. And this number cannot be zero. Similarly, the third case here, I have, again, that row cannot be zero. And so if we look really carefully, if I highlight this, this, and that, those rows there show that zero equals a number. Zero equals a number, zero equals a number, which is impossible. That's when we get no solution. If we keep on looking at what's left, this scenario here is exactly what I had. I had my, in the first example, I had three zeros here with everything else being numbers. And so I could actually find that point of intersection. And finally, if this was the scenario here, where I get a row of zeros, that's the key here, I want a row of zeros, then I get a line of intersection. And this is the line. This is like having two planes, and this will work out to be our line. Super. So, if we consider this scenario, this row, this row, and this row, make these three cases where there are no unique solutions. And x cannot be zero in these little places here. These represent non-zeros. The other scenario, this one here, I get a point because I get these three to be zeros and I can calculate the points working backwards. And finally, this one, the last one here, this is the key because you have to introduce a parameter for either z or t or z or y and then you have to solve back to get the other case. So it works out nicely. So those are three possibilities, or our five, many possibilities to get planes, and we always solve the simultaneous equations. My preferred method is with matrices.